All right guys, MTech Guy here, and today we're going to be talking EDC suspension, which was standard equipment on the E60 M5. Okay, so a lot of you guys out there that already own one of these cars will have a good idea what the EDC suspension is, but I know there'll be a lot of you guys out there that are interested in these cars, maybe even thinking about buying one. So to start off with, we'll take a look at what the EDC suspension actually is, and we'll just talk about a brief overview of how it works. Okay, so it's essentially the shock absorbers, the dampening of the suspension that adjusts on the fly. It'll self-adjust to different road surfaces and especially when you're putting the car into a corner at a reasonable speed. Obviously the body of the car will want to lean over and the shocks on that side it's leaning into, it'll push back. So the stiffness of your shock absorbers is adjusting all the time to different conditions. Now then, you've also got a button on the centre console where you can choose from three different programs so you can choose how aggressive you want the shocks to react. So you've got comfort mode, normal mode and sports mode. So obviously comfort mode is going to make the ride much more comfortable, much more wallowy and it's not going to react so harshly when you go into a corner but it will still react, it will still adjust just not as harshly. And then you've got the normal mode which is a nice balance between comfort and sports mode. And then of course you've got sports mode which is going to make it a bit of a rougher ride on the straight roads, going over bumps and whatnot, but it's gonna handle so much better when you're going into the corners, so definitely worth selecting this one if you're on a nice windy road. And if we jump inside the car here, if we take a look on the center console, we've got our EDC button there. Now it's currently in comfort mode. If we press it once, that puts it in normal mode. And then if we press it for a second time, the two orange lights illuminated, it's now in sports mode. And it's also worth mentioning, if you do have it in normal or sports mode, it will stiffen the steering up slightly also. So if we turn this off, there's also another way of going about it. If we go into the iDrive menu here, we go to the M Drive settings. If we go down here, you can see we've got the EDC option there. You've got comfort, normal and sports. And you can have that dialed in with the other M Drive settings and that'll activate when you hit the M button on the steering wheel here. So like I say, the EDC suspension was standard equipment on all E60 M5s and this is one feature that I love about this car because you can essentially dial the suspension in to make it a different car for different situations. So you can go from it being a luxury, comfortable cruiser you know, you can wind the horsepower back to 400 horsepower, you can set the suspension in comfort mode, and it's a nice, comfortable cruiser. Or, you could go right over in the other direction, where you set the horsepower up to the full 507 horsepower, set the suspension up in sports mode, and then you've got a car that handles awesome with that screaming V10 engine. And look at it! Look at the car, it's a big slab of a sedan saloon car, not exactly a light car, but you can dial the suspension in on one of these cars, or it'll handle better than a lot of sports cars out there. And with that screaming V10 engine, it really adds to that wolf in sheep's clothing thing these cars have got going on, and with all the settings you've got, how you can dial that car in, it can be a real Jekyll and Hyde car. Comfortable luxury cruiser, or insane sports sedan, and everything in between. So there you go, that's a bit of an overview of what the EDC suspension is. So, how does it work? Okay, so you've got shock absorbers in the rear, struts at the front, they're made of aluminium, they're filled with fluid, they also have electrically controlled valving inside them, and them valves are taking inputs from several sensors throughout the car, which get processed through the car's computer, through the EDC module, which is in the passenger footwell, which will then in turn adjust the valve position at each shock or strut and that valve position will determine the pressure of the fluid inside the shock or the strut and that will determine the stiffness of your shock or your strut. It's as simple as that. Okay, so you're probably thinking to yourself, mm, compared to a normal set of shock absorbers, that's a pretty complex system and it's got a lot of equipment looking after it. So there's gonna be a potential for things to go wrong way over and above a normal set of shock absorbers and all the expense that comes along with it. And it's a fair question, and if you're thinking that, yep, you're spot on. So, what are the main failure points of these EDC shocks and struts, and how do they normally go wrong? All right, so taking a look at the front of the car here, if we take a peek through our arch gap, 
you can just about make out the aluminium top section of the front strut there. Now these shocks and struts are super susceptible to leaking fluid and you can often see it by a bit of a wet patch around the top of the aluminium body there. Now this is a super common problem with the EDC suspension and it often comes about if you've hit a pothole with one of the wheels all that force going back inside the shock usually will breach the seals and it'll start leaking and it's not something that you can repair there's no repair kits available so you essentially have to change out the shocks or struts and you want to be doing that in pairs so one of the main pieces of advice I can give you if you own one of these cars is avoid potholes like the plague any speed bumps anything like that you want to be dodging out the way of them or going over them extremely slowly because you will wreck your EDC shocks or struts and they are super expensive so it's not a path you want to go down if you can avoid it now another couple of faults that can occur although to a lesser extent is you've got the EDC module in the front here in the passenger side obviously if your car's left hand drive it'll be over the other side of the car now that can develop faults over time but changing out the module pretty straightforward and that'll usually fix that issue and then if we take a look under the bonnet here under the hood you can see at the top of the strut towers you've got these plastic caps and there's your electrical connector to the wiring feeding the top of your EDC struts there and this wiring under this plastic cap plugs into the top of the shock it's a very small connector and what can happen over time is that connector can become dislodged usually due to vibration and whatnot which will cause the EDC system not to work properly and nine times out of ten if you get a fault with the module or with these connectors it'll normally throw a code up and you'll see that image on the dash of a shock absorber it'll give you that warning now one thing worth mentioning with this EDC suspension is if you've got the original struts and shocks on your car it's more than likely that they're pretty worn out at this stage and that wear will accumulate very incremental amounts over a long period of time so it's not something that you'll notice even if you've owned the car for a long period of time it's unlikely that you'll notice that wear but even with that wear in place the automatic adjustment will still work reasonably well but you'll normally notice it when you use your button to go from comfort, normal and sports mode you won't feel a great deal of difference and I hear this from E60 M5 owners all the time and it's certainly something I've experienced with my E60 M5 now then, I recently had a new set of EDC struts fitted to the front of the car and one thing that really stood out to me is how much it improved the suspension dynamics and especially when you switch between normal comfort and sports mode there's a real distinct difference between each setting which wasn't there originally with them original worn out front struts now they were replaced because they were leaking so it was definitely worth doing but like I say after having them changed out it really stood out to me just how much improved the suspension characteristics so if you own one of these cars and you really want to get that suspension on point you really want it to perform just as it did when it came out the factory then it's definitely worth changing out all four struts and shocks but like I say before it is a super expensive exercise so if you choose not to go down that path certainly understandable but if you do it will really transform the car it'll really bring it back and you'll get the most at your E60 M5 by doing so all right so they're the main failure points of the EDC suspension now what options have you got when things go wrong when your shocks and struts fail now unfortunately there's not a great deal of manufacturers out there making replacement EDC shocks and struts for these cars over the genuine BMW ones now the only ones that I know of are the Bilstein replacements I've not got any experience with them myself so I can't say how they perform but they are much cheaper than the genuine BMW ones and if you do choose to fit them you will have to modify the wiring slightly but it is a cost effective alternative to the genuine BMW ones now there are kits out there which will allow you to fit regular shocks and struts and that comes in the form of an emulator which tricks the computer into thinking that all the EDC settings are satisfied and then that allows you to run just a regular set of shocks and struts but you do lose that EDC feature if you choose to go down that path but to be honest the genuine 
BMW EDC setup works extremely well. I've been really happy with it. And my opinion would be if you do need to change them out, it is worth spending that money and getting the proper setup, the proper genuine BMW ones. But of course, it's your car. It's up to you. You do as you like. Now then, when you do come to fit your new shocks and struts, two things you want to be thinking about so you don't increase this massive ride height gap which I spoke about in a previous video it's already massive so you don't want to make it even worse and it's really important that when you fit your new front struts that they're placed right the way down they're fully seated in the hub carrier and the other thing you want to watch out for is make sure that the springs are seated correctly they can be clocked incorrectly so just make sure they're in the exact correct position and then they're going to work 100% and you're going to get the most out of your new front struts all right guys so there we have it that's the edc suspension on the e60 m5 in a nutshell if you found this video interesting or useful don't forget to give it a like make sure you go and check out the rest of my youtube channel for more e60 m5 content consider subscribing if that's your cup of tea i'm mtech guy thanks a lot for watching